Hello, I'm Kyle. I'm the technical content developer at Maple Systems. Welcome to the Maple Systems video training series. In this video, I will be covering how to configure a high speed counter using an HMI PLC combo, specifically an HMC 4070, but you can use any HMC 4000 or 2000 series. Also, attached will be an HMC3 M1210 Y0201 V2 I.O. module, but you can use any V2 I.O. module. We will be setting up the logic to control the speed of a motor with a quadrature encoder, and I will be displaying it on the HMC user interface. Here is a wiring example on how to determine the speed of a motor using a high-speed counter with a quadrature encoder. In this example, I'm using a PWM speed control connected to a DC motor and quadrature encoder. There's a power supply that's supplying 24 volts to the PWM speed control. So plus goes into DC plus, and then minus goes into DC minus. And then motor out plus and motor out minus goes into the motor. For the quadrature encoder, phase A connects to X0, phase B, X1, 24 volts into COM on the IO module, which is being jumpered to the 24 volts on the HMC device. So 24 volt power is being supplied from the power supply to the HMC, the IL module, and the quadrature encoder. And then zero volts into the zero volts on the HMC device. You can also find this wiring example on the how to determine motor speed using a high speed counter with a quadrature encoder, Mapware 7000 tutorial page on the Maple Systems website. Now back in Mapware 7000, First, let's configure our I.O. module. So over to the left, go to I.O. allocation, drop down, expansion, double click. I already have it added here, but I'll show you how to do this. And then for model, you'll choose whichever I.O. module you're using. In this case, I'm using an HMC3 M1210Y0201 or V2 because you can select the V1 or the V2. Check off download configuration settings click configure and we're just going to be configuring our high speed counter so under digital high speed counter input channel one choose quadrature because we're using a quadrature encoder four times mode click confirm you must click confirm to allocate that setting on your IO module click close and then hit OK now after you allocate your IO, these tags will populate in your tags list. We're not gonna be using all of these, but I'll go over them. There are six high-speed counter tags that will be configured once you allocate your IO for high-speed counter. So the first one is the config register. So depending on what you're using, single phase or quadrature, you will see a certain value here and you can find these descriptions in the HMC 3000 IO module guide, which will be attached to this tutorial page on the Maple Systems website. And then the enable bit is how you enable the high-speed counter, and then your preset reached, and your register is gonna be the actual count of your high-speed counter, and then you can reset that count using the reset bit, and then also your preset register. Now these are all the tags that will be configured, but we're only gonna use a few of these in this example. Here are all the tags I'm using in my ladder logic. The first three are configuration tags, high-speed counter enable bit, a high-speed counter register, which will display the pulse count from the encoder, and channel zero output coil to be used for an alarm to turn on and off. And then the next six are user-defined tags, motor status tag, which is the integer. This will display whether the motor is in forward, reverse, or stop. Zero would be forward, one would be reverse, and then two would be stop. And I'll go over that later on when we go over the logic. The current pulse and the previous pulse, pulse per two seconds, pulse per minute, and the RPM value. And I will explain why I'm using each tag and its usage when I go over my ladder logic later on. Before we jump into the logic, I will need to explain the calculation to determine the speed of the motor or the RPM value. In MAPR 7000, this calculation will need to be put into your logic to get the RPM value. The encoder will send square wave pulses, and then the PLC will measure the speed. The speed of the motor equals pulses per minute, or speed equals revolutions per minute. First, we can calculate the number of pulses our encoder reads in one minute by taking the pulse reading after one minute 
and subtracting it by the initial pulse reading or previous pulse. In this example, we don't want to wait one minute for an updated motor speed. So we can take a sampling reading every two seconds and multiply by 30 to get a minute or 60 seconds. The current pulse minus previous pulse equals pulse per two seconds. So pulse per two seconds times 30 equals pulse per minute. Now that we have found the pulses per minute, we can check our encoder specifications to see how many pulses one revolution has. In the data sheet, you can find the specification that details how many pulses the encoder requires to make one full revolution. In the encoder we're using, it's 400 pulses per revolution. So pulse per minute divided by 400 pulses per one revolution equals the RPM value. Now back in MapWare 7000, here is all the logic that I'm going to calculate to get the revolutions per minute, which is being read from the encoder. So here on the first rung is the HSC enable bit, which will be a positive pulse contact. It's an initial scan bit. It's a first scan pulse. It'll turn on during the first scan of the PLC operation. So that initial pulse will always be zero, but I'm not going to be displaying that here. I'll be displaying a previous pulse and a current pulse. So I'm going to be converting the HSC register into the previous pulse into a double integer, so any to dint. It has to be some kind of integer or double integer or real in order to be used in an arithmetic function like subtractive, division, or multiplication. As well on rung two, to show the current pulse, I'm converting that register into the current pulse, which is a double integer. On rung three, here is that sampling time. I'm using a pulse signal generator function to pulse every two seconds or 2000 milliseconds. And then I'm doing the subtractive function here to subtract current pulse from previous pulse to get the pulse per two seconds. And then I have a copy one gain or a move function, MOV, the current pulse into the previous pulse to show that here. So this tag here, this register here, is going to refresh every two seconds according to this two second pulse here. On rung four, I'm multiplying the pulse per two seconds by 30 because I'm doing a two second sampling and that will equal the pulse per minute. And then dividing the pulse per minute by 400, 400 being the amount of pulses in one revolution for the encoder that I'm using and that will equal the RPM value. That is all the calculations you'll need to do here to get the RPM value. But next on rung five, I have a comparison function here. So it's saying that if the RPM value is greater than or equal to 5,000 RPMs, it will turn an alarm on, which is slot one, output coil, channel zero. And then I rung six, seven, and eight, I'm using some compare functions to determine what the motor status will be, whether it's going forward reverse or stop. So here I have the RPM value. If that is greater than zero, the motor status will be forward. If it is less than zero, the motor status will be reverse. And if it's equal to zero, the motor status will be in stop. So that is all the logic you'll need here. So now let's go over our user interface. So let's go to the base screen. So here is a user interface or base screen. This is what you will see on your HMC device. And so we're displaying a toggle bit, a bit lamp, some numeric displays, a advanced meter, as well as a word lamp. So the toggle bit is the HSC enable bit. The advanced meter is assigned to the RPM value tag, and this will show the RPM value as it speeds up or slows down and whether it's going forward or in reverse, and also when it has stopped. And then we have some numeric displays to show the RPM value here, pulse per minute, the current pulse, and then the alarm bit lamp. So if the RPM value exceeds 5,000 RPMs, the alarm will turn on. And if it's below that, it will turn off. And the word lamp is to indicate the motor is going forward, reverse, or if it has stopped in at zero. So now we've gone over the user interface, the logic, our tags so now we're ready to go online and so go to mode go online with download check off application click download so here is the logic online so I'm going to open up VNC viewer so we can view the user interface and so here's the user interface this is what we're seeing on the HMC device so I'm going to enable my high-speed counter I'm going to click this button here on and you can see that this is now red so indicate that it's on 
So now you can also see a live camera feed of the PWM speed control as well as the motor and encoder. So I'm going to start the motor and I'm going to put the motor in forward motion. And then I'll also demonstrate it going in reverse because this is a quadrature encoder and it can go either forward or reverse. And you will also see the RPM value here, pulses per minute, as well as current pulse here as well. And you'll see the arithmetic working here for current pulse minus previous pulse to equal pulse per two second. And then as well as multiplication here and division here as well. And then also down here, you'll see the motor status, whether it's forward, this forward bit would be on, and the reverse bit would be on if it's going in reverse. And then below that is the motor status to indicate if it's in stop, which it is right now. So you can see that the stop bit is true. So I'm going to turn on the motor and go forward in motion. And I'm going to speed up the motor slowly. You can see the word lamp is showing that it's going forward by displaying forward. And the alarm turned on because we exceeded 5,000 RPMs. You can see that it's also true in the logic. But now I'm going to slow down the motor. The alarm turned off. I'm going to stop. You can see that now it says stop. I'm going to switch the motor into reverse. Turn it on. And you can see that's indicated with reverse. And you can see the RPM is in negative, indicating that it is now going in reverse mode. Speed it up. Slow it down. Go down to zero, stop. Back in stop, and the motor is off. Okay, this is all I'll be covering today. To get more information, please visit the How to Measure Motor Speed Using a High Speed Counter with a Quadrature Encoder Mapware 7000 tutorial page on the Maple Systems website. I hope you enjoyed this video, and thank you for watching.